I think of the words of the psalmist in Psalm 34 and verse 3, when it says, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. How thankful we are tonight we can do this. Paul and I were talking about a week or two ago, finalizing some reservations and plans, and asked about my stay over tonight. He said, Jeff, there are two or three things going on here and I just want to double check to make sure you need a hotel room. And Paul, I think you said there was something called a mudder run. Well, I did that today since I was coming to Middle Tennessee. I ran to Nashville, saw my mudder, and came down to Pulaski. And glad to be here. I walk in the door. My good brother and friend Wendell Reiner from down around Tuscumbia at the Spring Valley Congregation, surprised me tonight. Saw Terry Hell back there. It's been about 30 years since we were at Freed Hardeman together. We both enrolled when we were 12. And it's good to see her. And before I got in the truck to leave, my mama hollered at me and she said, you're going to Pulaski. Would you ask if anybody in that congregation down there is related to the East Step family. So if you are, please let me know afterward. But I'll say this, if my mama owes you money, that's left totally up to her. I've got nothing to do with that. I got the sweetest card the other day from a nine-year-old sweetheart right here in this congregation by the name, I believe it's Shelby Young. And it was a sweet little card that said, we welcome you and we're praying for you. I'm grateful for children. Children are special to gospel preachers in their local work. It was over 25 years ago, my wife and I, we were at the Gullisville congregation. And while we were laboring there, we were invited to come over and have supper one night with a couple that had a 10-year-old girl. And we were sitting there at the table, and you know how the hostess will take just a few moments to get a few things together and then bring it to the table. And the little 10-year-old girl looked up and said, Boy, y'all sure missed the fight Mama and Daddy had before y'all got here. <laughs> and I said, Really? Tell me about it. And her daddy said, No, I don't think she needs to be telling you about that. I want to fast forward seven years later at Bible camp. I went in, I was greeting some of the kids that had grown up, and here she is, 17 years old, and she came up to me and she said, hey, Mr. Jeff, and I said, Natalie, it's good to see you, girl. You want to tell me about anything going on at your house with your mama or daddy? No. <laughs> I treasure our children. Tell you the truth, I treasure everybody in the kingdom of God. I'm grateful to travel places and to see folks, and I'm grateful to see old friends, and I am grateful to make new friends. I think it's a wonderful thing to dedicate the book to the late brother Andrew Connolly, whom I did not have the privilege of meeting nor hearing in person. But I know there are a lot of Memphis School of Preaching students here this weekend, and I want to pass along a word of thought to you good brothers. Never pass on the opportunity to spend time with a Garland Elkins, a Tom Holland, a Paul Sane. You embrace every moment you can with them. Don't you ever be intimidated by any preacher in the kingdom. We're all servants of the Lord. We're striving to get to heaven. We're all preaching out of the same book and declaring the same gospel. A couple of years ago, I was, or been a little longer than that, I was in Shirts, Texas, and I had a little few moments after lunch, and so I sat down with Brother Keith Mosier and Brother Robert Taylor, and we were visiting, and as I was going back over to the building, somebody came up to me and said, man, how in the world? You sat there and just talked with Brother Taylor, and Brother, oh, man, that was something. What were y'all talking about? <laughs> in my Tennessee drawl, I said, I was asking them how their youngins were doing. I went to school with Brother Mosier's two sons, Mark and Keith. I went to school with Shara, who married Tim and uh, Brother Taylor's son. I just want to know how they were doing. And he thought we were going over some kind of deep study or something of that nature. If I had been, I would have just nodded and went on about my business. 
Preaching students, treasure those moments. Set a spell and talk. You will never, ever regret it. The title tonight is Laying Up Our Treasure in Heaven by Serving Our Master Faithfully Unto the End. If you've looked at the lectureship book, it's pretty well simple. You've got there four key words in that title. I don't know of any better way that we can cover it. And I believe it's time that God's people realize that we have a lot of things to be thankful for. And as we're laying up treasure in heaven, we need to rejoice and to be about our Lord's work. You know, if I am going to lay back some funds for a rainy day, if I want to invest toward my retirement, if I want to save some funds, number one, I'm going to be active in earning my keep. That's a command of God that we work and that we provide for our own. 1 Timothy 5.8 I'm also going to have a plan to save it. And within that plan of saving, I want to put it in the best fund possible and I want to have it available when I need it. Now if I parallel that in a spiritual way, number one, I must be active in my faith. James chapter 2 verses 14 and following says that our faith is expressed by the works that we do. That works are not what a man does to be saved. Works are what a saved man does. It shows his faith. He works out his salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians chapter 2 verses 14, 15 and following. And so I'm going to work and I'm going to save and I'm going to plan my savings in my obedience unto God. I am going not only to observe and when I obey the plan of salvation as put over here to our right and to your left, when we do that, we want to move onward and we want to walk in love First, or rather Ephesians 5, 2, walk as children of light, Ephesians 5 and verse 8, and to press onward faithfully for our Lord, investing carefully. I want to be able to put it in the best place possible. I want to place it to where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves do not break through and steal. I want to place it in heaven, Matthew 6, 20, and I sure want it available and thankful when it's time to withdraw when the Lord will look unto His servants and say, Come ye blessed of my Father, enter into the joys and do embrace the inheritance of our Father. Tonight I hope that we can motivate ourselves a little more to look as servants of what we can do to treasure, to place our treasures in heaven, to encourage you and to encourage me to keep on keeping on. The gospel still saves. The Lord is still on the right hand of God. His church still stands. And there are faithful Christians who love Him. And we are His servants. And we're going to press on regardless of what the world may throw at us. It's still the best life to live. It's the best thing to teach. It's the best thing going. It's the only thing going. And sometimes we just need reminded of that when we invest our treasures in heaven. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, we're reminded no man can serve two masters. He will either hate the one or love the other or hold the one and despise the other. And you cannot serve God and mammon. Tonight as we consider serving our master faithfully unto the end, let's think about the one master that we are to follow, our Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, Let's refresh our serving. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. You're a bond servant. What you were facing when you were a slave of sin, the restraint of Satan had upon you, you now have refreshing as a servant of God. Same chapter of Romans, going back to verses 1 through 6. We understand how we became that servant of righteousness. When we know it in verse 3, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death. Therefore, 
We are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should be made to walk in newness of life. If we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we will be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, our old man of sin is crucified with him. The body of sin might be destroyed, and from now on we should not serve sin. You see, as servants of righteousness, we have an opportunity to be refreshed as His servants and to press onward and to keep on keeping on. Let's remind ourselves, folks, we are His servants. He is our Master. When I go to John, the 12th chapter, and I look at verse 26, Jesus in the first five words says, If any man serve me. If I'm going to refresh my serving, let me see what he says here in the Gospel of John. Verse 26 again, if any man serve me, let him follow me. That where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. When I was a boy, I recall a valuable lesson that the biggest, smallest word in the English language is the word if. It's a small world, word, but it's big because if I would have done this, if I would have done that. Jesus said, if any man serves me, let him follow me. When I stay here in John chapter 12, I know that he will be with us as he is our master. He is also, or he is our master, we are his servants. Look at verse 25. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. Now there is something refreshing about hating yourself. I know that sounds strange. But now notice what he says, hateth his life in this world. You see, for the servant of Christ, worldly things are secondary. It's what we have when we serve our master. We now have that commitment that the apostle Paul penned in Galatians 2.20 when he said, I am crucified with Christ. We noted that back in Romans 6. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, when I look at that, and I ask Paul some advice on delivering the lecture, and the lecture written in the book, and this and that, but as I was looking at this the other day, I'm reminded now as a servant that I am to bring forth a pursuit of my faith. I'm going to keep on keeping on. What saved me is going to keep me saved, as we'll see in a moment. When I go down to verses 32 and 33 when Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters and friends, we are still drawn to that cross of redemption. Ephesians 1 and verse 7, that cross that never gets old. The preaching of the cross, according to 1 Corinthians 1.18, is power unto the saved. And as we think of that, it is the preaching of the cross by which we are called, 1 Corinthians 1.24 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and verse 14. We are called by the power of that cross through the gospel message. That preaching of the cross keeps us looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Hebrews 12, 2. And the saving of the preaching of the cross, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, keeps us saved if we keep in memory what he's preached unto us, unless we believed in vain. Again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So when I take a look at my pursuit of faith, I must always embrace the preaching of the cross. This past week, I was privileged to speak in the Avondale area of Chattanooga. 
And I made a point in a lesson, and the preacher there got up and said, Brother Jeff, got some of my lesson that I'm going to be delivering at a men's day on Saturday. And it was dealing with redemption. It was dealing with doctrines and things of that nature, rather. But you know, we often say, can I steal that outline from you? We often say, can I, you know, I've heard that before. Look, we work out of the same material and we serve the same master. You don't have to steal an outline from me. It's inspired of the Holy Spirit, copyrighted by truth. Use it if it'll save a soul. The preaching of the cross, you never get too tired of hearing it. We never went weary of the gospel message. Stay with me in John 12 as we refresh ourselves, servants. And notice in verses 35 and 36, Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knows not whether he goeth. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be children of light. To refresh ourselves as servants, let's just keep walking. I think of 1 John 1 verse 7. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I love that thought of fellowship. To go on to tell us if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, we are refreshed as servants with those that we walk in the light. Maybe reaching for that lectureship book. This is the 25th year and I'm blessed in my library to have some of the lectureships from the early days. And I enjoy reading those and referring back to them as need be. Maybe picking up a lectureship book, such as the one that you may have in your hand, will refresh and remind you of those faithful servants that have gone on before and the fellowship that we have together in Jesus Christ to see one another and how grateful we are that one day we will be singing redemption song in a place called heaven. Let's refresh our serving the pursuit of faith, the preaching of the cross, the precious fellowship that we have. Let's embrace it. Let's keep running the race and refresh ourselves as servants of God to keep onward for our Master. May I give you a second one. Again, the title does it all. Let's remember our Master. We're servants. But let's remember who the master is. In Matthew 22 and verse 16, a comment by the Pharisees and the Herodians, a flattering point. But yet it was true. Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life, our master. Within our master, there are some things we would, as we refresh ourselves as servants, let's keep looking toward the master who loves us and who wants us to be the best we can be in serving. Let's remember the master's authority. The word master is used in other places as one who exercises power. Who has greater power than Christ, our Master? To where all power or authority was given unto Him in both heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. I think about as Jesus Christ preached the gospel, that sermon on the mount there in what I call nature's amphitheater, and proclaimed the gospel, proclaimed the good news, proclaimed a message unlike anything they'd heard before. And we find that out at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. 
when the Bible says that the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Let's never forget the master's authority to where we will once again go to a book, a chapter, and verse, to where we will constantly do those very things. And to be His servants, let's stand with His authority. If we stay with that, let's remember His teaching, because the word master is also defined as a teacher, that Greek word didasko, to teach, a title of address, I think in Matthew 8, 19, that there's a certain scribe who acknowledges Jesus as a teacher, as, a, as referred to him as master. Well, the scribe would be looking for something to write about. And he needed to listen to that master. He needed to listen to the teacher. I think about Mark 4 and verse 38, where he was called master upon the sea. Master, do you not care or carest thou not that we perish? And that's impressive because he was unlike any other teacher. You see, he brought forth his authority and made such a great difference in the lives of the people that he came in contact with. And as his servants, he's the master with all authority, we learn from our teacher, our master. We make that same impact in the lives of people because we may be the only time that a person will hear or know of the gospel of Christ or know of the church. Have you ever engaged in a conversation with someone and they're very sincere and they're very gracious but there's a lot of I thought, I feel, my preacher or my pastor may say and yet you're trying to simply reply what the Bible has to say. I'm going to tell you something, folks. People are still out there looking for what God has to say on the matter. Let's follow our teacher. Let's embrace his example. That Peter said in 1 Peter 2 and verse 21, he left us an example that we should follow his steps. And when I look at his example in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, he reminds us that the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. That we ourselves follow His example in serving, in ministering or serving. And then I think along this line to let us remember the evangelism of our Master. From the time that He was born there into that little manger, Right before that, it was told that she, Mary, would bring forth a son and would call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, Matthew 1, 21. Mary knew when she delivered that child that he was going to make the difference in the world. Later on, as he's walking in Luke 19 and verse 10 to Zacchaeus and his household, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And through his evangelism, through his reaching others, he gives us a command in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Look, y'all, I grew up in the church. All I've ever known is the church. You really want me to tell you what will make a difference and watch the church grow if every child of God would take one soul a year to teach the gospel and convert them. You do the math. It still works. It's still there. People will listen. People are longing for it. 
I think about those in Acts chapter 8 and verse 4. When the problems arose, they pressed onward and they went everywhere preaching the word. Through that, you had a man named Philip that went down. Not only did he preach to a whole city of Samaria, but he also ran to a chariot and taught a fellow, taught a eunuch, what he needed to do to obey the gospel. He was good with a crowd, and he was good one-on-one. I think also, too, that we are able to study the Word of God to know those answers. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and to give an answer, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. When our fellow servants are overtaken by sin, let's remember the words of Galatians 6 and verse 1. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Let us also reach out to continue to reach out to those that are in need of the gospel message. You see, if I refresh myself as a servant, Let me remember my master. Let me keep my focus on the master as the servant. I'm refreshed. I remember. Let me renew my faithfulness. That's the third one. Times like this, we're renewing. I have looked forward to coming. As Paul mentioned, I had not been here before. Look forward to it. I heard a lot of good things about East Hill through my young friend Robert Hatfield and through Emily. And I love them and grateful for the good work they're doing in South Carolina. I know you miss them, but they're doing a good work and I'm so happy for them. I've got to tell this. Robert did a meeting for us where I preach in Cleveland. And Brother Paul, I reached back for those old lectureship books. I said, Emily, come here. Let me show you a speaker from days gone by. I think Robert was a junior in high school when he had written a lecture for that book. He hasn't talked a lot to me since. But we do get along well. Let's renew our faithfulness. Let's just stay with it. Through the struggles of Israel, through the agony, through the lamenting of Jeremiah and of Israel and their sin, somewhere in that book of Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, the compassions and mercies of God, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in Him. The Lord's mercies are new every morning. You rise up and they are there. Material things wear out. New things become old. True or false, if you have a church directory made by the time it arrives, it's out of date. Somebody new has been baptized. Got to put in another picture. They say today you take computers as soon as you get away. Well, something's old later. A couple of weeks ago, Renita and I took some time off, went to Universal. And we got on and we rode this ride. And man, we were impressed of all the... I mean, I had a cartoon jump out and shock my cart. I was impressed. And I mean, you, you see this, and then you go over to an exhibit that say got a little age on it, and you can tell the difference in technology. You see, things become old, but the child of God must renew his or her faithfulness because we remain new. Time's going to get me, so bear with me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Go back one chapter to 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16. Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. To the child of God, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God. 
And then Isaiah 40 and verse 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You see, although the world can get old, yet our faith must be renewed to keep on keeping on. And oh, how we can do that. And to listen to the words of our Lord one day through His grace, Matthew 25, 21, and 23. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joys of thy Lord. Let's renew our faithfulness. Let's refresh our serving. Let's pick it up and keep on going. Let's remember our master. Let's renew our faithfulness. And finally, let us run with endurance. March 3, 1993. Cancer has ridden his body. I like to think of that coach, Jim Valvano, when he was trying to find somebody to hug when he won the national title a few years before. But you remember, you see it every so often. Every year they have the basketball uh, tournaments and all for the Valvano Foundation that battles against cancer and the research and all. Remember his words, don't give up. Don't ever give up. That quote is often played, it's motivated many. Let us spiritually never give up. Wherefore? Seeing we are compassed or circled about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. He endured, He bore the cross. He took my sins, He took yours. He endured, carried it through. May you and I endure to the end, knowing the same shall be saved. Matthew 10, verse 22. So fellow saints, as we lay up our treasures in heaven, let's just simply do the following. Let's refresh ourselves as servants every opportunity we get. Let's always remember our master and follow his pattern in our service. He's still the head. We're still part of the body. Let's renew our faithfulness. And let us run with endurance and stay all the way to the end. And to hear those good words, well done, Thou good and faithful servant. And then until then, let us press onward. But when that comes, let us enter by His grace. And let us withdraw those treasures in heaven we've laid up. Let's withdraw them eternally. Brother Paul.